The Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association and your local cable provider presents Cable Reports. Join us now as Cable Reports brings you up to date on current issues facing the Commonwealth through discussions with your local legislators and other policymakers from across Virginia. Welcome to a special edition of Cable Reports, brought to you by the Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association, connecting Virginians to their government. I'm Woody Evans, and our guest today is Secretary of Commerce and Trade, Maurice Jones, the person responsible for growing, strengthening, and diversifying the new Virginia economy. Welcome, <laughs> sir. Nice to be with you. Thank you. Uh, can you uh, give us uh, 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 a summary of the current economic uh, climate in the Commonwealth of Virginia? I can try. Um, I would say a, a summary or a headline is the economy in Virginia is healing very nicely. We announced very recently that our unemployment rate had fallen to about 4.8 percent and that the total number of jobs in the Commonwealth right now sits at somewhere around over 3.8 million. It's the largest number of jobs in Virginia since April of 2008. Since April of 2008. The lowest wow. unemployment rate since then. So you look at data points like that and you, you, you see that our economy is robust and healthy and competitive. It's the, our unemployment rate is the, is the lowest on the, uh, in the southeast and the third lowest east of the Mississippi healthy, healthy economy. At the same time, though, we are still trying to reposition this economy to, if you will, a new playing field with respect to our largest investor, and that's the Defense Department. Mm -hmm. And so our economy remains too reliant on the public sector for its health, for its growth, for its prosperity, for its resilience. And so therein lies the big risk. So we've got two things going on at the same time. We've got a very healthy economy, but we have a risk in the economy that is too dependent on the public sector that we have to urgently change. Talk to us about the fundamentals of, of the economy. Uh, is, is manufacturing, uh, agriculture, and forestry, uh, trade, all elements of, of this new economy? All of the above. Um, in addition to that, tourism is a healthy contributor to our economy. Uh, the information technology space with data centers and cybersecurity, et cetera, they are healthy contributors. Energy is a healthy contributor. So we have a pretty diverse economy. And then you've got all the public sector. Um, uh, factor. So we have a healthy, diverse economy. We are attempting, though, to catalyze those parts that are private sector, non-public dependent, that are growing, and that are paying good wages to our folks. Talk to us in a little bit more detail about uh, the employers, the non-public employers in, in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Well, we have them um, all over uh, the economy. So if you look at health care, we've got places like Innova, which has a large announcement today. We have Centera, uh, which is another big health care um, um, enterprise. We have, we are, Loudoun County is probably the home, is probably home to the largest number of data centers in the country. Uh, Seventy percent of the Internet's traffic, I'm told, passes through uh, Loudoun County. So we've got the information technology uh, space as well that's also a healthy economy, a piece of our economy. We have energy. Uh, Dominion is the second largest energy company uh, in the country. Uh, we've got Appalachian Power. We've got a energy um, industry that is beginning to really, really burgeon around the, if you will, the new energy. And we mm -hmm. still have a large piece of our economy, particularly in the Southwest, that is coal. So we've got 
a, and we could go on. Uh, I think I mentioned tourism. We've got right. hotels and uh, all kinds of uh, enterprises that make up our tourism uh, industry. We've got a healthy uh, economy in the private uh, pieces of it, but it needs to play an even bigger role. And of course, tourism and the wine industry <coughs> are, are, are oh, yeah. working hand Part in hand. Part and parcel. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, what about bioscience? Uh, because you mentioned healthcare, but I think there are a lot of developments oh, yeah. there as well. Absolutely, and we have, um, we've got a great opportunity in bioscience in that we have world-class higher ed institutions and other research institutions such as VCU and Tech and UVA and EVMS, et cetera. We've got, um, we're right close to laboratories uh, in the federal space that can help us. In addition, we have a number of private sector enterprises that I hope are going to help us translate more of this intellectual capital into commercial opportunities. So bioscience is a very big focus of ours. The governor had a summit on bioscience where he invited down uh, this professor from MIT who is a superstar in this space to help us think about what our strategy needs to be to really become one of the hubs for bioscience in the world. And you mentioned some of the institutions of higher learning and of course uh, they are, especially uh, Virginia Tech for instance, is, is involved in a lot of research. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think you may have seen the recently Tech and UVA, among others, uh, were named as uh, part of the top 100 research mm -hmm. universities uh, in, the, in the country. And absolutely, those are our higher ed uh, enterprises are huge assets when it comes to the growth of our economy, and in particular places like uh, biosciences. And I believe there is a research facility at Virginia Tech, maybe in Roanoke, uh, a medical research facility, Carillion, yes. that also has a facility focuses on, focusing on uh, brain injuries, concussion, yes. judgment, cognitive yes. uh, abilities, yeah. and things one, of that nature. One of our gems in our portfolio, and uh, we think that neurosciences is one of those areas where Virginia can become among the greatest. And of course, that's why it's so, so, so important to uh, maintain a reasonable level of tuition costs at our institutions of higher learning, as you understand. Absolutely. And uh, it, that is also another reason why we have to make sure that the research mm -hmm. pieces of our uh, higher ed uh, enterprises are invested in robustly because the potential payback is, is enormous. And of course, part of your portfolio includes workforce development and uh, a relationship with our uh, community colleges. Talk to us about the importance of the community colleges in that regard. When it comes to workforce development, uh, they are among the most valuable assets you know that we've got 23 community colleges around the Commonwealth. There's a community college within 30 miles of every resident. Workforce development is right in its bailiwick. And we have, um, we have seen that what we will need to do to really, really lift Virginia's economy, both now and uh, for the remainder of the 21st century, is we have to get more of our employees with the right credentials when it comes to licenses and certifications and apprenticeships. Our community colleges are among the most valuable assets for us getting that job done. And so the community colleges are another place where we have to make sure that we do everything that we can to empower, to authorize, to enable them to help our folks get the right certifications demanded by businesses. We think we're going to have a million five hundred thousand jobs to be filled in the next decade in Virginia. Fifty to sixty-five percent of those jobs will require these certifications that I'm talking about. Not four-year degrees, mm -hmm. but the right welding certification, the right certification in, in health care, the right IT certification and license, etc. Community colleges will be at the forefront of getting those jobs done. And I believe about 10% of the population of the Commonwealth is comprised of veterans. 
Uh, and a lot of those veterans are returning from theaters of war now, and they will be able to take advantage Absolutely. of those types of certifications that you speak of. Our veterans' population grows by 2,000 per year. 2,000 per year. We have 800,000 or so veterans right now in the Commonwealth. An incredible, incredible um, uh, talent base that we have to make sure we maximize for the Commonwealth and for attracting uh, assets to the Commonwealth. And what about allowing returning veterans to receive credit for experience that they have received overseas? Yes, the, and the governor, uh, part of his workforce proposals this year that, um, that are in front of the General Assembly uh, gets to that very point. We're trying to make sure that our veterans get every credit possible for the in, invaluable experience that they've received both educationally and on the job, if you will, in the military. Absolutely. And of course those community colleges are used by students who want to matriculate further into our institutions of higher learning. There's the 2 plus 2 program yep. that virtually guarantees admission if they maintain a certain grade point yep. average. Tell us why that's important. It's incredibly important, particularly at a time that tuition uh, around the Commonwealth and around the country is rising. And so more and more you have to be very strategic about your higher ed uh, choices uh, and you know, factors such as cost and also aspirations uh, are as important now as any time in our Commonwealth's history for families. And so when you've got the opportunity to uh, attend a community college. Uh, we've got first-rate community colleges, mm -hmm. and when you have the opportunity to attend them, uh, get a certification license, get a uh, associate's degree that can lead to your then going on and finishing uh, university in two years. When you look at that price, uh, that price point, uh, and the, uh, if you will, the value proposition, it's hard to beat it. It really it's is. It's hard to beat it. Now, of course, there's been a uh, 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 focus on science, technology, engineering, engineering and math, which, which are definitely critical. But you talked about health care, and we need to, clue, to include that H in terms of education oh, yeah. at our community colleges, oh, yeah. as well as our institutions of higher learning. Yeah. When we look at our forecast for jobs in the next decade, health care is the number one what would be in first place in terms of where uh, the plurality of jobs will be. Uh, so there's no question that we have to get more of our employees, more of our students, more of our adult learners, uh, if you will, certified and uh, in healthcare and more competencies in the healthcare space. That's where the jobs will be. 44 military installations in the Commonwealth, the Pentagon. Uh, talk to us about the impact of the budget cuts in Washington and sequestration. Hard to overstate their influence on the Commonwealth. I, I tell people all the time, uh, the military is Virginia's angel investor and has been for generations. And so um, reductions in military expenditures in Virginia does a number of things that are tough for us to overcome. Uh, one, it reduces the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Two, though, it also uh, reduces the wages going right. to Virginia's residents who are defense uh, company uh, employees or defense department employees. And three, uh, it has an adverse impact on a number of our workers who are contractors to the military. Mm -hmm. So it really um, cuts in federal defense spending have an incredible influence on the economic prosperity of Virginia. And thus, while we need to make sure we take advantage of Virginia's strategic location next to D.C. in the military and maximize every opportunity we can get, we also need to make sure we are diversifying the sources of our health and growth. And so that's why we're trying to really catalyze the non-defense dependent parts 
of Virginia's economy. And that's where the governor is really focused. Uh, I know you work closely with the Secretary of Transportation, Aubrey Lane. Uh, uh, he's uh, responsible for implementing uh, uh, the, the funding package that was passed a couple of years ago. How important is transportation to your efforts? It's huge. It's huge. And, and it's not just roads. Um, Aubrey and I are also working on airports. So one of the uh, big uh, opportunities in Virginia in terms of growing the economy is trying to attract more air carrier service to our regional airports in particular so that our uh, business teams can travel from Virginia to New York with one stop in economical or travel to the West Coast with one stop and it's an economical uh, flight. We are also working on that piece of transportation along with highways and, and, and roads because when, you, when it comes to growing the economy, you know, you have to be hitting on all cylinders on both air and then land. And then lastly, I should say, Aubrey and I are also uh, attached, if you will, at the hip with respect to our port. Sure. The port of Virginia is a huge piece of the infrastructure for growth of jobs and, and businesses and wages. And so uh, the better the port, the better the Commonwealth. And of course, that, that, that port is a huge asset. Uh, we were talking earlier about the ability of the port to handle the post-Panamax ships, those huge ships that will carry much larger containers now. Talk to us about that asset. Yeah, another great blessing for the Commonwealth. The Port of Virginia right now is the only port on the East Coast already equipped to accept post Panamax size ships. Uh, our channel is already deep enough. We don't have to do any more dredging. We don't have to lift bridges uh, like other places are doing. Today, if the Panama Canal were already open to uh, these post Panamax ships, they could already have Virginia as first and last port of call. And that is incredibly important for us in terms of competing for shipping cargo from Europe and also from Asia. Coming, trying to find a place to then unload goods or, or load up goods uh, in the international uh, uh, global market. And Virginia is well positioned with our port now. To be Talk to us in some detail about the uh, international reach that the Commonwealth of Virginia has in terms of exports. I believe, obviously, Canada is one, but I was really surprised to learn the amount of exports we do, for example, to China. Yeah. Virginia is a global player, uh, and people should, um, should really, really uh, appreciate that fact. Last year, we, uh, we traded, or I should put it another way, People from outside of the country purchased $35 billion of goods and services from the Commonwealth. About $35 billion. $35 billion. About $16 billion of those uh, were manufactured uh, goods. About um, $16 billion were services, if you will, that we are providing. Uh, and then another three uh, were agricultural goods. So Virginia is very much, and has been for some time, a player on the global marketplace. The governor, just in the last 12 months, has traveled to England, China twice, uh, Korea, uh, Japan, Hong Kong, all for the purposes of letting people know about this value proposition that is Virginia and recruiting businesses from across the pond, if you will, to come and set up shop in Virginia. And we're having an enormous amount of success in doing that. So both outgoing and incoming uh, global trade, global finance, if you will, uh, Virginia is playing a huge role there. And it's playing a huge role in the growth of our economy. Um, if you look at companies that are actually involved in exports, you'll find that they're growing at a faster clip than companies who are not, and they're paying higher wages to their employees uh, than companies who are not. And so we're trying to encourage all companies to think about the fact that 80% of the world's purchasing power 
exist outside 80 percent 80 percent outside of the u.s and so if you're interested in growth and resilience in a sustainable economic market uh, economic model you have to look at global trade and we want to be helpful in that regard so how many trade offices or missions does the, the commonwealth currently have abroad wow we have well i'll put it to you this way if you um, if you combine offices with the fact that we also have partnerships with people mm -hmm. in other countries we're in over 60 countries mm -hmm. around the globe right now trying to facilitate people purchasing our goods and services and trying to facilitate companies coming to Virginia and creating jobs. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And we are looking at opening uh, additional offices. Uh, for example, the Virginia Economic Development Partnership uh, is looking right now at the uh, return on investment, if you will, uh, or the value proposition of opening an office in Korea. And so we'll see. So what's the, uh, the pitch that's, uh, or the message that's delivered, for example, when you decide you want to open an office in Korea? What kinds of things do you tell a, a potential uh, investor in the state of Virginia to, to, look, to sure. look at? Sure. When we're in Korea, we, in fact, we were there uh, this past uh, winter, fall. We're there saying, look, Virginia is the best place for business to come make money and grow jobs and contribute to uh, the economy of yes Virginia yes the country and yes the world and we tell them about our great higher ed institutions we tell them about the best workforce in the country one in ten employee in Virginia has technology experience we tell them about the port we tell them about the uh, the air traffic piece that we were just talking about we tell them about this incredibly low corporate tax rate so Virginia's corporate tax rate is at six percent it's been at six percent since 1972 I joke with people all the time to tell you to give you a perspective on how long ago that's been or how long this we've been at this rate in 1972 the Miami Dolphins won the Super Bowl it's been that long it's been that long <laughs> and in 1972 I had an afro <laughs> right that's how it's long it's been that long <laughs> <laughs> so we you know we talk about our great infrastructure our great talent our great corporate climate our entrepreneurs you know uh, the history that Virginia had Virginia was started as a business enterprise and so we make the pitch that if you're looking to grow your business, if you're looking to access the North American market, um, no better place in the country to come than Virginia. And guess what? We will put the best team on the field to help you navigate through any challenges you have. And um, that message resonates with folks. And I take it that same message would resonate with a uh, domestic uh, company in California, Absolutely. Maryland. Where, 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 we where make the example. same pitch to a company, whether that company is in Chicago or Shanghai. Um, at the end of the day, the fundamentals of what folks are looking for when they're thinking about expanding uh, their business doesn't differ between that Shanghai company uh, and that Chicago company in a material way. Now, what about incentives that we are able to offer, either a domestic uh, business venture or an international Yeah, one? absolutely. Um, we have incentives to help our existing businesses expand, and I will tell you that that's where most of our new jobs come from existing businesses who are expanding, which makes sense, right? They're already here. They already know what a great blessing this place is. Uh, and so they, they're looking to expand. But we have uh, grants to help with um, training for the employees. We have grants that we use to compete to make the value proposition better than it would be in Georgia and Tennessee and North Carolina and all those kinds of things. We have people that will help expedite the permitting processes that companies have to go through. So we have incentives, uh, tax incentives as well. So we have a toolbox of incentives and we work very closely with the General Assembly, by the way, in, um, in making sure this, that this toolbox remains robust and competitive. 
Uh, and at the end of the day, it is, and I, I say this humbly, it's the best toolbox uh, in, the, in the country, and, and we want to make sure we utilize it uh, to maximize our opportunity. We've talked about Northern Virginia, the Hampton Roads area, but the area you're from, South, south Side and Southwest Virginia, sure. is in great need. Yes. Uh, talk to us about what's happening there, how you can encourage entrepreneurship, and the importance of the T Tobacco Commission there as well. Yes, the T Tobacco Commission is incredibly important. Uh, I'm from Lunenburg County. I grew up in Kenbridge, a town of about 1,200 people. Uh, historically, uh, those parts of the, of the Commonwealth have relied on textiles. They've relied on farming. Uh, uh, they've re relied on manufacturing, uh, those kinds of uh, industries. What I'm actually very encouraged because I am seeing great opportunity in particular around manufacturing in both South Side and Southwest. Uh, the combination of the fact that the cost differential now for manufacturing enterprise between Virginia and China is not as great as it used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and the revolution in energy that has made uh, Virginia and the U.S. the lowest cost energy provider for our manufacturing enterprises and this incredible workforce that we have that works hard and has a manufacturing, if you will, um, legacy, uh, tradition, uh, makes South Side and Southwest well positioned to take advantage of some manufacturing opportunities. And we've had some great successes. We've had a number of different announcements, for example, in Grayson County of manufacturing enterprises. We had uh, Appomattox. We had uh, the largest economic development announcement in Appomattox in 44 years occurred just last year. We've got some things going on in Blackstone around Fort Pickett. So I'm actually very encouraged, but I will tell you, um, there, the work there um, is going to require long, sustained efforts. And the Tobacco Commission is a leading, if you will, asset in a long, sustaining effort to create more resilience in those economies. We've got to get more of our uh, students in those areas, for example, graduating from high school, going on to the community college and either getting an associate's degree or a certification, uh, and then coming back, right? And we've got to get more of the manufacturing enterprises looking in those areas. And we're working on all of the above. But I'm encouraged. I, I think um, we're uh, we're on the cusp of a renaissance in rural Virginia, and, and we really need to work hard to make sure it, it uh, comes to fruition. Great. Well, it sounds like a promising future for the new Virginia economy. I hope so. Thanks for being here, Secretary of Commerce and Trade, Maurice Jones. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching this special edition of Cable Reports, brought to you by the Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association connecting Virginians to their government. Until next time, I'm Woody Evans. Mm -hmm.